We're at the University of Arkansas Division of Agriculture Re Research Station in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Today we're going to be show demonstrating and showing the construction of commercial strawberry beds. Uh, here to lay commercial strawberry beds for us today is David Brown, the owner and operator of Brown's Berry Farm outside of Springfield, Missouri. David? Doing, sir. Good, sir. How are you? Good, good. Um, one of one of the demonstrations that we're doing in this project is showing the diff potential differences in production and quality of strawberries raised on uh, commercial strawberry beds and those raised on uh, small vegetable beds and. One thing that we want to do today is ask David some questions as a strawberry grower and as someone that does contract bed laying. Uh, David, could you tell us a little bit about what you feel the differences are between raising strawberries on a large 8 to 10 inch strawberry bed and beds that are smaller, do not have as much soil under cover? Well, one of the first things uh, we we'll like to think is the taller beds will gather more heat, and uh, that that has an early uh, will give you an earlier crop in the spring. And then also, the taller the bed, uh, it keeps the fruit up away from the ground for rain splash, uh, has a you know a cleaner fruit. And then also, uh, from what we hear from the customers, they like it being up high. It's easier to pick and it's easier to see when it's, it's a taller bed, makes it easier on them. Sure. Uh, you know, some of the things that come to mind too, if you're actually paying people right. to pick strawberries for you with the taller bed, you may, it may be a little easier and a little quicker for them to get the same amount of fruit, saving you money. Right, right, that's true, that's true. And maybe, uh, do you, do you so you think there may be some uh, with the taller beds there may be some uh, uh, little less disease problems with the uh, with the taller strawberry beds yeah I think there's less disease because you get more airflow down through the beds they're like I say they're up off the ground uh, where they're not getting the fruits not getting mm -hmm. as wet and uh, you know you just and more heat you know sure. more heat, uh, gives you a little more yields and than a regular lower bed would. Uh, one one thing I'm noticing is these beds, they have a little bit of bevel or a pitch mm -hmm. to the top of the bed. Uh, is that standard with commercial strawberry beds? Yes, and this particular machine here has what they call a crown a crown in the inside the bedder that lets uh -huh. the water drain off. And if you look here, you'll see we've put, uh, you know, we've put two passes in there and probably the third okay. pass are to go ahead and pack the ground in better so that that groove fills up there and then it'll firm the bed up. Um, kind of getting in talking more about the machine, uh, when when you go to lay your beds or beds for someone else, what are, what are some tips you could give potential growers uh, before you come to their farm to lay beds or just general tips to make a quality bed? Well, you want to have your ground plowed good and deep and then tilled and then it, it doesn't hurt if you go over it with a, a solid shank ripper or a, or a subsoiler to break mm -hmm. that hard pan up. Uh, because you can see here, you know, it takes a lot of dirt to make an eight inch bed. So therefore you're going to have to work your ground a lot deeper. You can't, you have to think past just normal farming of where mm -hmm. it's just plant, you know, for seed. Uh, you, you're going to have to get the ground down deep and to, in order to get, have enough dirt together a good bed. Okay. Um. Now looking at your machine here, would you mind tell us what, what kind of machine this is? This particular machine here is a 2600 rain flow. It's capable of making an 8 inch bed and it comes out of Pennsylvania. It's got a row tracker here on the back to kind of help hold it straighter behind the tractor if you're on a hillside or mm -hmm. something that's supposed to help straighten that out. It has a fumigation attachment if you want to fumigate your soil. and. Uh, it carries two rolls of plastic so you don't have to, you know, you have more plastic for less less trips back to the other end. Um, this this seems like a pretty big machine right here. Uh, 
what kind of horsepower does it take to pull this machine? Well, the manufacturer uh, in their book, they say you need a 90 horsepower tractor if it's two-wheel drive. If it's four-wheel drive with front wheel, you know, then 50 horse would be what you would need. This particular tractor here is 65 horse with front wheel assist. It handles it just fine, but then on the other hand, you have to weight the front end. Uh, so as you pick a machine up, it'll want to daylight the front okay. tire, so you'll need a little bit of weight on the front on these 5,000 series tractors, but as far as the horsepower, it handles it just fine. Okay. Um, one of the questions that I, that I have um, is, in the, I'm just throwing this out there, wh how much acreage would you have to have, in your opinion, to justify investing in a machine like this? Well, that, I don't, I'm not sure about that. We have, we currently have four acres and probably if I could get somebody to come and do it in a timely manner, maybe I wouldn't even own a machine, but you yeah. know, you can't always get somebody when you need them. And, and if you're going to be in the business and paying somebody $1,000, $1,200 an acre to lay plastic, you'd just as well try to own your own okay. equipment. Um, on the larger mulch laying equipment, uh, what kind of price are we talking about just in general to kind of let people know what what kind of investment this could be I think it would probably I, I haven't checked the prices lately but I would imagine in the with fumigation and attachments probably in the seven thousand dollar range I okay. would think that's just roughly guessing okay um, so in you know we're and we I think what we're going to have, we're going to, we should have a lot of people interested in strawberries, and they may be a lot of people like me that, you know, are going to be doing uh, smaller, smaller retail plots. Um, do you have any advice for them about forming their beds and machinery and stuff? I mean, whether it might be better to get someone to come in and do this or could we could those people get by with less expensive smaller equipment yes yeah they have they have a little smaller better than this this is you, you can go a lot less than this but at the same time you probably in the beginning you might want to hire somebody else to do it to save the expense of that you mm -hmm. know give yourself a couple three years till you get a little bit of income decide that that's what you really want to sure. do you're better off probably to hire somebody but then on the other hand if you're going to be in the business you'd probably want to get your own equipment eventually right um, I think one other question I have, and I'm, ask, I'm asking this because I do a little bit of bed laying uh -huh. myself with smaller, substantially smaller equipment. Uh, it takes a lot of skill to be able to use this equipment to its full potential, I think. And, uh, you know, uh, it, there's, a, there's a learning curve with uh, using uh, the bedding equipment to do a proper job and I mean I'm, I'm sure you can you can attest to that too right yeah we've been doing this I think for nearly 18 years in the first couple of years it was kind of a nightmare to learn the equipment and find out what you were you know the troubleshooting it I sure guess would be the word to trying to get everything lined out use breaking plastic or one thing or another you know and a lot of it has to do with tension on the rollers or the okay the, pitch up and down on the machine you know once you get those two things lined out that helps quite a bit there uh, it sound it sounds like if someone's serious about getting into the uh, plastic laying you know whether whether it be for strawberries or vegetables or whatever or, uh, sound like if they could go to a workshop or a class it you right. know it would probably really benefit them I know that uh, there's several there's a couple of meetings a year uh, here in Arkansas that that they have and it would be well to go especially on the day they demonstrate equipment because mm -hmm. you know you can get hints from the guys that's already laying it and uh, you can talk to somebody ahead of time it'll help line out a lot of potential problems later when you're on your own okay uh, Dave is there anything else that you'd like to bring up uh, in general or specifically about the equipment and the bed laying no that's that's about all I've got I think okay well, we sure appreciate your oh, time. Well, thank you. Yes, sir.